Erasmus of Rotterdam was acknowledged as a critical thinker of his era. He played a substantial role in the shift from the Middle Ages to the Renaissance, which paved the way for the emergence of modern philosophy and the Enlightenment. In this video, we'll delve into his life, analyze his critiques of the Church, and examine notable works like The Manual of a Christian Knight and In Praise of Folly. Moreover, we'll explore his concept of Christian humanism. Erasmus was born in Rotterdam between 1464 and 1467. The exact date remains uncertain. This is because he was the son of a Catholic clergyman and his maid, which necessitated keeping his birth a secret. Erasmus received his early education in monastic schools and eventually became a priest. Later, he pursued studies in philosophy and theology at the University of Paris, which was the leading European institution of its time. During his time there, young Erasmus stood out for his witty humor and healthy dose of disrespect toward authority figures, often putting his teachers in challenging argumentative situations. At a young age, he had already published several writings in which he addressed theological issues of his time. Nevertheless, he was far from being a detached clergyman. In one of his texts, he praised the freeing power of sexuality, suggesting that even priests should not be denied it. Being a clergyman who rejected the strict educational ideals and hypocritical sexual morality of his time, all while presenting brilliant arguments, he soon became a target of Catholic hardliners. However, the sharp-witted Erasmus proved difficult to pin down in debates. Several attempts to entice him into making heretical statements were unsuccessful. His extensive travels also prevented him from falling into the hands of the Inquisition. In England, Erasmus formed a close friendship with the liberal theologian Thomas More. They engaged in playful mockery about princes, cardinals, and even the Pope. Together, they devised a strategy of concealment that allowed them to critique the Church on one hand while preventing themselves from falling victim to a popular practice among Church authorities at the time being burned at the stake. Upon returning to what was then the Spanish Netherlands, Erasmus delved into rigorous studies of Greek and earned his livelihood by publishing ancient classics. In his book, Manual of the Christian Knight, Erasmus criticized the worship of relics as superstitious and urged the church, which had drifted away from the common people, to embrace greater humility. The book gained popularity among enlightened theologians and laypeople and sparked controversy. When Erasmus found that his controversial statements made him unwelcome even in the more tolerant atmosphere of the Netherlands, he decided to travel abroad once more. This time, he chose Turin as his destination, where, at the age of almost 40, he pursued a doctorate in theology. During his time in Italy, Erasmus made acquaintances with several cardinals and theologians who shared his views. Many clergy members began to recognize the pressing need for the reformation of the church. Instead of mercy and charity, a regime prevailed that no longer distinguished itself from worldly profit-seeking through the commercialization of indulgences, vast property holdings, and corruption. Erasmus gained a first-hand understanding of the troubling state of declining Christianity. Upon his journey from Italy to England in 1509, he makes the decision to address these issues through the means of satire. This decision ultimately leads to the creation of his famous work in Praise of the Folly. In his 1511 publication, In Praise of Folly, Erasmus doesn't spare anyone from criticism. He targets all social classes, universities, churches, theologians, lawyers, soldiers, kings. Everyone gets their comeuppance. Almost all Christians being wretchedly enslaved to blindness and ignorance, which the priests are so far from preventing or removing that they blacken the darkness and promote the delusion. In this work, Erasmus personifies folly as a goddess who delivers a humorous and sharp critique of the various forms of human foolishness, including the corruption and ignorance within the Catholic Church and the clergy. Through wit and irony, Erasmus highlights the absurdities of society, politics, and religion of his time, 
calling for a more rational and virtuous approach to life and faith. The essay is a Renaissance classic that both criticizes the shortcoming of the era and advocates for intellectual and moral improvement. Publishing in praise of folly is not without its risks for Erasmus, as it could potentially label him as a heretic. Nevertheless, from his perspective, it is only by challenging false doctrines and breaking down entrenched ideological beliefs and dogmas that true intellectual advancement can occur. Written as early as 1511, this is the first work that advocates against the persecution of heresy, especially opposing the use of the death penalty. Erasmus argues that when someone is deemed a heretic and believed to be in error, the approach should focus on persuasion rather than persecution. Erasmus argued that the Bible should not be overly interpreted in a literal sense. This perspective gave rise to an academic tradition known as historical criticism or the historical critical method. It stresses that each story in the scriptures contains parables, guidance, or instructive narratives that must be understood in the historical context in which they were written. Moreover, these narratives can be subject to multiple interpretations, as individuals perceive them in their own distinct ways. It is not a higher authority that determines which interpretation is permissible, but rather the free exchange of opinions. This is the essence of what is known as Christian humanism, a movement in which Erasmus played a significant role. The foundational texts of Christianity should be accessible to a broader audience, and education should no longer be the privilege of the wealthy and powerful alone. Faith should unfold within individuals, rather than being imposed upon them. He argues that among human beings, who all possess a degree of folly, it's impossible to communicate and maintain good relationships without occasionally admitting and acknowledging that others make mistakes. It involves recognizing that at times people say or do foolish things, and being willing to forgive because one understands their own imperfections. Erasmus resided in Freiburg and Basel for the majority of his later years. His passing on July 12, 1536 marked the end of a life dedicated to promoting the struggle against intolerance, unfounded hatred, and misguided authorities through his extensive body of work. In the Enlightenment period that followed and the emergence of modern philosophy were significantly shaped by Erasmus of Rotterdam and other Renaissance thinkers. An early figure in this later movement was René Descartes, often regarded as the pioneer of modern philosophy. In our upcoming video, we'll explain why Descartes encouraged his readers to question rather than blindly accept what other scholars called truth. To ensure you don't miss this video, please subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions, suggestions, or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section, and we'll respond to you.